you know, a lot of times people want things to be organic for no particular reason. Uh, the thing about gardening is if you're going to eat it, obviously it makes sense. If it's going to be around your home, obviously it makes sense. Why use toxins around your house or around where people are or pets are? But what's really compelling about it is it's a more effective way to garden. We're here at the Mission Viejo Library in Mission Viejo, California, at the Rose Garden of the uh, Rose Society of Saddleback Mountain. Last night, I gave them a talk titled Lively Soil for Maximum Bloom and Minimum Pest and Disease. And that is really what we're all about. I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation and we're uh, landscape architects and landscape contractors and general engineering contractors. I'm not here with Chip Valentino today. Uh, he didn't make the trip to Mission Viejo, but he's with us in spirit and uh, will be a big part of our upcoming videos. We're at the Mission Viejo Library where the uh, Rose Society of Saddleback Mountain has their rose garden. About a hundred roses, all beautifully labeled. They maintain them and they nurture them. We're going to help them with that process and uh, we're going to show you how we intend to get involved here in maximizing soil health and plant health. Big, big, more than usual. So whoever's growing this, you're doing a great job. It looks very healthy, uh, very nice. Lots of people have their own formulas for optimizing the health of roses, um, and sometimes it involves unusual ingredients. Uh, I've, found, I've tried them all, and I found our blend, when I've done testing, is more effective than anything else. Tremendously effective on roses, and we hope to show that as we maximize the health of these roses and maximize their bloom and uh, maximize their vitality, which is their best defense against all pests and diseases. So we're gonna do another video from here in uh, May or June, whenever the club members tell me is their maximum bloom. We're gonna see the results of our applications and we're going to apply our products to about 90% of the roses and leave out about 10% and see uh, what the difference is and then we'll show it to you. And so the whole idea of uh, John and Bob's is to basically infuse your soil with um, beneficial a life, food for life, attractants for life, and that um, life is the most effective way to address every pest and disease we know. And even some, if you go to nurseries and ask how to control fire blight, for instance, that's the one thing they, you won't be sold a pesticide for because it's, it's really not a good way to control fire blight. Well, all of those things like verticillium wilt, fire blight, I think our best bet is infusing your soil with life. And that gives us a chance at combating even these more mysterious diseases that we don't exactly know how to control. We had an interesting discussion last night with the Rosarians in this club. One of the things that really intrigued me because I wasn't aware of this was one of the members uh, said she has had success using earthworm castings for mildew on roses and mildew on other plants. And uh, I had never tried that. She uh, recounted dramatic success with it. When I use uh, earthworm castings on something like a, a rose for a problem like that, I like to put blend under it, the rose, uh, the uh, earthworm castings about an inch and a half to two inches thick in the root zone. We've done a video on um, its effectiveness in terms of eradicating and repelling whitefly and aphid, but blend, uh, a regular application of say three cups in the root zone with an inch and a half to two inches topped uh, earthworm castings, try that for mildew. Yes. Uh, before you got here, we had a discussion about chili thrips, uh -huh. which are maddening, 
And I'm wondering if uh, use of this product has any effect at all on chili thrips. You did mention well, it might help with other tests. Yeah. Another thing that came up um, that's interesting to me is they're having a problem here and they have had a problem with for about four years with uh, chili thrips and that's a vexing problem without a singular answer, a, a tough one to get rid of, but whether it's chili thrips or any kind of pest and disease, I think our best hope is by maximizing the health of the plant and maximizing the health of the soil. And that's exactly what we're going to do here at this garden. Uh, we're going to do an application of two cups of um, blend in the root zone of all of these roses and then uh, three cups I'm going to leave some bags for them to apply in a spring after they uh, in early spring after they do their pruning so that's the first strategy in any problem you're having in, in your garden let's maximize the health of the plant or the lawn or the tree and then let's maximize the health of the soil simultaneously and see um, if we can engage all those natural mechanisms to, uh, to fight problems like chili thrips. Just like I learned uh, last night, I hadn't thought of uh, using earthworm castings to treat um, mildew. I'm wondering if any of you have a good solution for chili thrips that you've used. Let's open them up to our viewers, our uh, engaged gardeners. Let us know in the comments uh, any input you have regarding chili thrips. Almost every uh, pest that comes in your garden starts out in the soil. I'd say about, I think this is like 75% of them. And so if it's going to start out in the soil and you have a lively soil full of life, there's every reason to think that it's not going to get very far because those uh, good fungi are way stronger than bad. Good nematodes eat grubs, good of uh, bacteria, protozoa, all of the good microbes in the soil are stronger than the things that plague, plague us in our garden. And the whole idea of Optimize is it, it's a concentrated organic matter. And so it works just like organic matter works in your soil, which does several things. Organic matter um, collects micronutrients around the root zone so plants can feed on it. It coats soil particles, so if it's clay, it ex improves the exchange of air and water. If it's sand, it improves the ability to retain water. And it uh, is food for microbes. Usually what comes up is everyone wants this to work as quickly as possible. So we came out with Maximize, which actually has mycorrhiza in it. My daughter says I shouldn't use the word mycorrhiza when I talk to people because nobody knows what it is, but you probably know what it is. And mycorrhiza is the most famous of the beneficial fungi. It attaches itself to roots. This is a good quality compost mixed with ground up basalt, like an old lava deposits. It has every mineral. Minerals are what really make microbes come alive in soil. They feed uh, microbes. My favorite organic fertilizer that I've ever used is called, we call it Nourish Biosol. And um, it is a really interesting product that, you know, one of the problems with, say, um, miracle Grow, the most widely sold fertilizer, is plants like miracle Grow, and roses would respond to miracle Grow, but it doesn't build the soil. It doesn't do any of what I'm talking about here. And so what we want is a fertilizer that not only feeds plants with micronutrients and macronutrients, but that feeds the soil. And the feeding the soil is probably even a little more important than feeding the plants, because if we do that well, the soil will feed the plants. So those are the three dry products, um, Nourish Biosol, Maximize, Soil Optimizer. What we do in our work, every project we do, you, we use these products, and the easiest way to use them is if they're mixed together. And so we mix them in a product called blend, and that just means it has uh, some of each. It's one part optimize, two parts nourish biosol, three parts maximize, and we sell it as blend online. That's the strategy here at the Rose Garden in Mission Viejo at the Mission Viejo lab, uh, Library. We're gonna follow it and we're gonna show you progress. 
uh, and uh, see how these do and see if we can figure out uh, some kind of solution or semi-solution to chili thrips. All the products mentioned in this video can be found in the uh, description below. I'm a big fan of a rose called Sentimental. That's S-C-E-N-T, Sentimental. Beautiful scent and beautiful looking rose. What we want to ask you this uh, week is what is your favorite rose and why? We'll uh, judge the impressiveness of those answers and uh, award a bag of blend uh, to whoever gives us the best answer to what is your favorite rose and why? Put your answer in the comments. We'll announce the winner in next week's video. We've done a number of uh, videos on roses. One of our more recent was uh, how to care for roses. Uh, check back on that.